Northern Golf is bringing you some of Australia's most interesting minds right to your kitchen table with our Croker Conversation series. Thanks for joining us on Croker Conversations. Uh, I'm Cathy Rowling and I'm the Community Engagement Officer with Northern Golf Resource Management Group. Today on our show, we welcome Erica Hughes, um, who's the founder of Farmer Meets Foodie, uh, which is a virtual farmer's market where farmers and foodies set up shop uh, to buy or sell produce. Welcome, Erica. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? Well, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, so I live at Mount Malloy uh, with my husband. We've got two adult children now. Uh, I've got a couple hundred acres here. So my background's in forestry and natural resource management. Um, I grew up just north of Brisbane, came up to the Tablelands in the mid 90s to work with forestry. And then I met my husband here. and We've traveled around Australia a fair bit working um, in different areas over in Western Australia and central Queensland and out in the Gulf. So I've predominantly worked in rangelands and natural resource management. What prompted you to develop Farmer Meets Foodie? Few things. So I, yeah, like yourself, worked a lot with producers um, and seen all the work they put into growing food and, and the things they do on an environmental basis as well as with animal welfare. And really, we don't see that reflected on our plates when, or when we purchase mm. produce when we're eating out or at home we generally don't know where it's come from or how it's been grown and the work that's gone into it so I was really passionate about telling those stories and um, and then also organizing some events where we're having like an all local produce menu and wanting to be able to try and find out where to source that and who had what available and what quantities working with the caterer and not and realizing that even though she was really interested in local produce not being able to she didn't know a lot of the farmers that I worked with. So I wanted to create that connection. And yeah, on our little farm here, we're looking at what we might grow and sell down to the restaurant cafe strip at Port Douglas, which isn't far yes. from. Um, but imagine quite a bit of work and going to each of those businesses and seeing what they, if they're wanting to source direct and, uh, mm. And what they would want, and then how often, and imagining having to go back and do that fairly often because there's quite a turnover of staff in the hospitality industry. Yeah, so, yeah, just seeing all the um, technology that's available now got me thinking that there must be an easy way to connect everyone together and get that flow happening a lot better. So, how does the Farmer Meets Foodie platform actually work? Yeah, well, like you said, it's a bit like a virtual farmer's market. So the producer and the cafes, they all make a profile or a shop on the platform and then they can upload what products that they have available and what produce type of products they're looking for and then just put it in a shopping cart and purchase direct. Okay, so that, that sounds really simple, um, something that anyone can use. Do you think consumers are realize that our local fruit and veg can sometimes travel up to two and a half thousand kilometers uh, to a fruit and veg market and then come all the way back up here uh, for them to buy D do you think they realize that yeah i'm not sure that they do i think in north queensland it really becomes ob obvious to us like when there's a cyclone or some disruption and the roads are closed and then suddenly there's very little fresh produce on our shelves that even though we know it's growing all around us it becomes really apparent then that um that it's yeah and that's when we find out it's going to brisbane sydney or melbourne and back before we get it yeah um yeah so i think that's people up here probably a little bit more aware of it than they might be um in areas that are closer to the capital cities yeah yeah um, and do you think it's the um, independents or the sort of chain retailers uh, that seem to be more concerned about the food miles? Um, I don't think necessarily that they're concerned about food miles. I guess from them, they're running a business and just um, wanting to, you know, run a profitable business. 
So as far as food, so they're doing that. The reason they're going to Brisbane, Sydney or Melbourne and back is just how how the system's been set up to be yeah. efficient with, to feed a lot of people. But probably the more independent ones have the um, opportunity to be able to source locally more easily, I guess, because they're not needing such volume and they can be a bit more and distinguish themselves out by by sourcing that fresher product because mm -hmm. if they're getting it direct, they're, um, you know, there's real value in that product being fresh rather than having sometimes to be treated to be able to travel that far and to be picked early to travel that far. So we've, you know, producers here on the table, and especially mango and avocado producers talk to me about how their best product doesn't get sold. It's actually left on the tree. The tree ripened stuff is their best produce, but because it, mm it's you know too ripe to travel that far it ends up going to waste in the, in the paddocks whereas if they can find a local market for it and yeah. that's what you know the real foodies and chefs love is that is that really quality fresh tasty product um that's where the opportunity lies for for those independent retailers to source yeah that quality yeah um, so with the restrictions that have been placed on us over the last sort of couple of months, uh, do you think consumers are more curious about uh, where their food's coming from? And do you think they're actually starting to look more at, at local produce and what's grown in their area? Yeah, I think, um, I think people really at the moment are really concerned about, or they don't want to go out to the supermarkets or to the shops if they can avoid it. So, um, and there was a point there we weren't seeing a lot of fresh product in the supermarket shelves. So they're starting to look for different options there. Um, and then the other thing they're really probably concerned at the moment is getting the best health. So the, the product that's going to give them the most immunity and that type of thing. And that's, you know, again, yeah. that precious product. Um, so yeah, we've definitely seen with the you know, in our North Queensland community, we have a closed Facebook group for farmers and foodies, and that has, you know, blown out of, I think we've got four or five times as many people in the group yeah. as we did before COVID. And that's people, you know, they're really looking for if they can get home delivery or, or pick it up direct. And that seems to have been a lot easier for the smaller suppliers to organise yeah. and than what the big supermarkets and things have been able to do. So that's where the real interest has been in the last couple of months. Yeah. Um, the, the transport costs um, to cart produce has you know, been increasing uh, over the years. Um, do you think, or what's, what's the best way for the farmers to uh, get more of our larger restaurants, you know, we've got a lot of accommodation, tourist trade um, in Cairns, Port Douglas areas. How do the farmers up here uh, get more business from them um, in, instead of sending it all the way to Brisbane, Sydney or Melbourne? It's really finding each other to start with and that's, you know, why we set up this platform to make that easier. Um, and then, yeah, finding it the best way to get it there. So we're finding a lot of the producers we work with do their own deliveries. We were expecting that, or we had heard that that would be one of the biggest obstacles was moving the product. But um, the majority of the, the farming businesses that have signed up do their own deliveries. So that's working out really well. But we, yeah, just working with producers and it's really a case by case basis because mm. there's such a diversity of food products and you know some require refrigeration or or frozen product um and various you know whole range of different sizes um it's really a case-by-case -case basis of working out the best transport options so we're seeing it with COVID-19 a massive um interruption to supply and transport as well so there's yeah you know potential opportunities for for people to um, starting small businesses to move product around for farmers as well. So we're seeing quite a bit of, of new distributors popping up um, or older ones becoming more well known and have been doing it, you know, for 20 years or so. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, on our platform, we've got space for those people to have a, a shop front as well and, and advertise themselves as distributors and connect themselves with the farmers and either the home foodies if they're doing home deliveries or to restaurants and cafes when they're open. Yeah. Uh, so I know you have uh, lots of uh, fruit and veg on, on your site, um, but what other products do you have as well? Uh, it's been really popular with meat producers, those doing um, like packs of different meat products. So mostly, you know, free range um, pasture raised products. So that might be chicken, um, sheep, beef, or a whole range of things. Um, so those producers, yeah, that are wanting, and a lot of them want to sell direct to the public rather than to restaurants and cafes. Mm -hmm. um, some do both. Um, and then lots of kind of niche, you know, different products like rainforest fruits and that type of thing, um, dried powders and, and value added products. So sauces and chutneys and mm. vinegars. Yeah, lots of different, even some seafood. So pretty much okay. anything that's um, grown or harvested in Australia. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, got it set up for Australia Post as well. So a lot of those niche products can be posted anywhere. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty wide variety, you know. Yeah. Flowers, saffron, some really unusual things, finger lines. Interesting. Um, so over the, over the time that you've had this um, running, have you noticed, Denise, increase in uh, the demand for uh, pasteurised uh, meat or, or beef, pork, lamb, chicken, I guess. Um, yeah. Are people more interested in that? Uh, yeah. So I guess that's a kind of consumer that's attracted to our platform. They like to know where their produce is coming from and how it's been raised, um, interested in animal welfare issues and yeah, definitely seeing a big interest in um, the pasture raised type of product and I guess that's where you know what we've tried to create with the platform the opportunity for the producer to put in their shop how their um, animals are raised or how their products grow and but also why they're doing it like that so maybe you know some mm -hmm. grain feed for the last month but they can explain why they're doing that or where they source yeah. it from or some I might be totally pasture raised and they explain why they do that or they might be biodynamic but not certified so they can explain you know what yep. what's behind their reasoning yeah. and give the, give the consumer um yeah. the option and to make informed choices so we all you know we have quite a lot of certified biodynamic and organic producers on the platform as well um but yeah definitely an interest in the pasture raising and egg production as well so it, it's actually a way, uh, or, or maybe an easier way for some uh, farmers to tell their story. Yeah, yeah, especially if you're not really tech savvy and wanting to to go right into the whole, um, mm. all the other options you can do <laughs> online. It's, you know, one a one-stop shop that you'll be able, you can set up to explain, um, yeah, to tell your story. Yeah. And we'll bringing in that you'll be able to share your shop direct in, and your products direct to Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. and those places as well. So that should make it a bit yeah. easier for people. Yeah. Um, so how would a farmer or, or a foodie find you? Uh, just at farmermeetsfoodie.com.au. They can jump on there. You can sign up straight away or, and just, or you can have a look around and contact us if you need some help to sign up. Yeah. So that sounds really simple and, and easy to use. Yeah, yeah. But if you need any help, we're here to give you a hand. Um, yeah. For sure. We Thanks. understand it's not everyone's deal, yeah. but I try to make it as um, user-friendly as possible, for sure. Yeah. Um, so what are the plans uh, for the future um, with Farmer Meets Foodie? Uh, our, our immediate plans is really just getting it running smoothly and making assisting producers and with, with their setup of their shops and their products and their delivery um, options. So that's, yeah, what we're really working on intensively at the moment. Um, going forward though, 
like we'd bought, we hadn't planned to open up to home feedies for another year or two, but we bought that yeah. because of COVID. Um, but post COVID, we're really wanting to be able to assist those restaurants and cafes when they open back up to tell their story of what local produce are using on their on their menus. So, you know, we see a lot of um, businesses saying we use local, but we don't really know what local yep. they're using That's or where right. it's yep. from. So our plan is to be able to have, you know, stars and things or badges to show this cafe uses this many products from these particular farms. Or yeah. Seafood harvesters, so they know exactly. The customer can then choose where they're going to eat out based on, mm. uh, on what produce that that business is using. Well, that sounds really exciting. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to see how it all, all unfolds. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, Erica, and um, hope we catch up again soon. Thanks very much, Kathy, and thanks for your interest. Mm -hmm.